Welcome to Remote Stem Class. Mr. Dowd here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Thursday. I'm going to go ahead and continue working on my Fort Jefferson project. Just as a reminder, our last day for this is the 28th. All right, that's the last day I'm giving you guys to work on this. All right, let's go ahead and continue copying and pasting these crenellations, I guess you could call them. I'm not really sure what their official word is. Get these points. That looks good. That looks good. Let's really spin this around. One more. Cool. I think that looks pretty good. So we've got all those different shapes now. So let's go and... Well, let's first group them all together. And let's change it to a brick color. Because the fort is a brick shape. Uh, I think next part I'm going to do is the lighthouse. So looking at, let's look at this picture. Actually, lighthouse looks like it's on this right hand side. So I'm going to say it's right here. So for a lighthouse, I think what I'm going to do is a cylinder with a parabola, a parabola on top. Let's go bring that. So this is 20. So let's bring this up to oops, bring this up to 20 itself. Let's go to a line tool. Cool. Let's just make this a little thicker to make sure they are connected in. Cool, cool. Um, so that with the per, and then it's a parabola, and then it has another cylinder on top of that, and then the lighthouse on top. So let's group this. Let's grab another cylinder. Let's raise it up to I don't know that size maybe. A little bit smaller. Let's also make this whole thing smaller itself. So maybe you could get to look at the top view of this. Actually, where's that button? Oh, it's hiding behind this. There's a button where you can yank it so it goes into the middle for you. Let's bring that. Needs to be a little smaller still. Let's go ahead and line this up. Yeah, looks good. And the last piece is another clear cylinder. The black. Hat. So let's change this color. Let's group that. Change the color to black. You can have another cylinder. How tall is this? 42. Let's bring this up to 42. And I think it was a size of 12 we're going for. That. Something like that. Looks good. Alright. Let's make this shorter and make it transparent. Well, let's go white transparent. A little shorter. Let's group that all. Oh, let's ungroup. I don't know why this is also selected. What did I do? Cool. 
that and leave it as multicolor. So I guess if I group it, I can't have a separate piece be multicolor. So I'm just gonna leave this as a transparent one and I just won't group them. And last but not least, we need the little hat. So I'm going to use a cone for that. What's this at? This was at 42 with a six. So that should be 48. Forty-eight. Bring it down to a size of twelve. Line that. Make the cone shallower, and make it black. All right, that's gonna be my lighthouse, guys, and that's what I'm gonna finish with today. So everyone have a fantastic Thursday. I'll see you again on Friday. So today I'm making a beef ragu meal. Okay, it's um in here I have some I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Some burn it. Some hamburger, some Italian seasoning and some chopped up carrots, a little bit of oil. And over here I have my gourmet cooking. Okay. Now I'm going to add to the beef mix some marinara sauce, which is just a red sauce. Mix this up. And I'm going to add a third cup of water. And some cream cheese. Cream cheese will make it a little thicker and creamier. This is like such an easy meal to make. Um, something quick. Okay, now I'm going to put a tablespoon of butter. Meanwhile, over here, the macaroni is still cooking. Mix the butter in here. Macaroni is always popular, at least in our house. Everyone loves pasta. All right, so. Nice and thick. Turn it down a little bit so it doesn't burn. Continue to mix this until it's done. Sometimes people have trouble telling if it's macaroni is done or not. You can always get a spoon and take a little piece out and run it under cold water and see if it's done. Usually it takes about five to seven minutes. I usually just estimate it.
you don't want undercooked pasta and you don't want overcooked pasta. Very hot today. Hot day for pasta. All right, so we got what? It's been four minutes, five minutes. this to put everything in. So, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out. All right, so I'm gonna grab a big stringer. to end. Mm, smells yummy. Mm. Alright. And now I'm going to picture perfect doesn't it Just a, little, a little cheese to put on top this is a long one it's a long video there we go a little cheese on top and voila looks yummy see yummy Okay guys, till next time. Enjoy. Hey Gators, welcome back to Language in Play. All right, so I am hoping that you guys started to research your historical character for our historical character project. All right, um, as I said, this is kind of the inspiration for this project came from Hamilton, where Lin-Manuel Miranda took the idea of having this important figure, Alexander Hamilton, in U.S. history and kind of not necessarily modernizing it because the story itself stayed the same, but the presentation of the story was modernized in a way where he created this hip-hop musical, basically. Um, so what I asked us to do is to find our own historical characters. All right, and I told you there were going to be some characters that I was going to be researching, and the characters that I ended up researching were Vlad Tepish, um, Julius Caesar, 
And I also looked into Martin Luther King Jr. because those were three time periods in our history that have always fascinated me. Um, but the character I ultimately settled upon is Vlad Tepish Dracul. All right. Uh, Vlad Tepish was the Prince of Wallachia in Romania. So what I want to do is I want you guys to look at where on the screen you guys can see the task is to research an historical character from any period of history that interests you. The character must be real and you must be uh, and you'll be using this character for the next few weeks to create a play. All right. So our goal is to create a full length play. All right. And when I say a full length play, it's not going to be an hour long. All right. It's going to be a five minute play, giving the gist one snapshot of this character's life. OK, so for our research. All right. And this is what we're going to focus on today. These are some starter questions. You can research more deeply than this. OK, but these are some starter questions. So I am going to answer this. Actually, what I'm going to do is I am going to make a copy of this, all right, so that I have a copy to work from, all right? And so here we go. I have the historical time period. So Vlad Tepish lived in the 15th century. All right. Lived in the 15th century. And he was born in 1431. All right. Where did my character live? Well, my character lived in Wallachia, Romania. All right. What is my character famous for? Well, my character is famous for being known as Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler was the prince of Wallachia and fought for independence. from the Ottoman Empire. Okay. Who are the people that would have interacted? Uh, so some of the folks that would have interacted with him were the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, his father had an influence on him, military leaders and maybe I need to do a little bit more research so this is where my research is lacking a little bit and this is what I want to show you is that I may need to come back and find some specifics in this category once I start developing my theories did my character have any sort of accent well how do I find that out I'm going to look up a Romanian accent, okay? I personally know that a Romanian accent is very similar to a Russian accent. It's a similar language. It's a Slavic language, all right? And I know that the time period in the 15th century, it was the medieval period. So there was a particular way that people spoke during the medieval period. So what I would do is I'm now going to go back and look up some of the things that were written during that time to try and figure out how people would have spoken. All right. So today I want you guys to do this specific research. All right. And we're going to be using this document, the historical character project for all of our work. All right. Don't worry about the character profile for now. We're going to do that tomorrow. For today, I want you to answer these specific research questions, all right? And I also want you to do any extra research that you think you need to for this project. All right? Can't wait to see what you come up with, Gators.
We'll see you tomorrow. Hi guys. So today we're going to be finishing up working on that shark rock. So I painted the rock so far with a base coat, like a primer. I'm also going to be using a rock that I already painted before as my reference picture because I like how this one came out. So I'm going to keep that nearby and then I'm just going to make a drawing of something very similar on this rock so I can have another shark rock. So I'm going to start off just by looking at this one for a few seconds and I'm going to actually just draw the mouth first and I think I want it to go right about here. So I'm just kind of drawing in how I want the mouth to go. Something like that. Teeth will be in there later. And something like this. So I'm going to do kind of like a two tone um, painting on there. So I might do something similar where it's a little darker on the top and a little bit like a middle gray or a lighter gray on the bottom part. So this is going to be like the very tip of his, kind of like his nose, right there. And then his eye is going to be somewhere around here. It's going to be kind of like an angry looking shark eye, I think. Something like that is good. Alright, then like a little bit of a, a nostril right about there. All right. So then I'm going to draw in some of those teeth. And I might change it a little bit when I start adding the paint. I don't have to stick to my drawing exactly. Maybe change a little bit when I add the paint. But more or less it will look something like that. All right. So I like how my drawing looks. So next, I'm going to do that two-tone painting. So I have a little bit of black here and some of the white. And I'm going to do um, like a darker gray around the top of the shark's head. So I'm just using a little bit more black than white to get that darker value of gray. And acrylic paints don't need a lot of water, but sometimes I just wet the brush a little bit and it just kind of like um, thins out the paint a little bit, which can be helpful when you're trying to control where it goes. And you can kind of spread the paint around a little bit better. If you're interested in painting rocks and then leaving them out somewhere, which some people do, it might be fun to paint a shark rock and then leave it somewhere nearby the beach. If you visit the beach, somebody might scoop it up if they find it. All right, so I have my darker value of gray at the top. And now I'm just going to do the bottom half with a little bit of a lighter gray. So I'm going to grab some white paint on my brush and then mix it into that gray that I was using. Maybe add a little bit more black, but I don't want it to be quite as dark as the gray that I already just used. Again, you don't have to add too much water. They're not watercolors, they're acrylics. So you, I just wet my brush a little bit because it won't work as well if you add too much water. It'll thin the paint out too much.
All right, so I'm going to let this gray paint dry. And then next time I will finish up the rest of the details on this great white shark. Okay, guys, see you next time. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.